I describe Predator 2 as pretty much being a rehash of the original movie. Predators is pretty much the same film again. It even takes place in the jungle, even closer to the original movie. There are some changes here and there that keep you interested and keep you engaged, but all in all, it's probably pretty much the same movie as the original. Beginning, middle, end. Facts, details, condense, plot, tell it. A group of soldiers are dropped into a jungle and are systematically hunted down and killed off by a group of predators. But not just any predators, super predators. As much as this feels like a rehash of the original movie, I do like how it's kind of changed in the sense that it takes place on an alien planet, looks exactly like a jungle from Earth, with some minor changes, but it is pretty much an Earth jungle. The movie starts off with a whole group of soldiers and criminals being thrown into the alien jungle, and we as an audience are being thrown into the movie with them, and they have to try and survive this situation. They meet up with all these different people, form a group, form a pack, and try and survive. Who on earth are they? There's only a few characters that are named in the movie. Adrian Brody's character named Royce is a US special operations soldier, well, former, and he is actually a mercenary. He did well in the movie. He packed on a lot of muscle for this movie. He's not the type of person who I would picture in this kind of role, but he did it well, so the guy has range. Alice Braga is a Israeli sniper for the Israel Defense Forces. She does good in the movie as well. I like how with this movie it continues with like the previous two movies. There's no love interests or any kind of love subplot. It, I thought it might have lent into that, but it didn't really, so that was good. Topher Grace is always in the movie playing Edwin, who is a doctor, and you're thinking the whole movie, why is he there? A doctor who is mixed in with all these special forces, soldiers, and criminals, and you later learn that he is actually a serial killer. Very dangerous, even if he not, might not look it. But there are hints throughout the movie when through his dialogue and his interactions with other people you can tell he's a bit awkward when it comes to interacting with people and there's just something a bit off about him. Like for example when he's talking to the Russian uh, Spetnaz soldier with the big minigun he, he's about to touch a flower he's like oh don't touch that that's poisonous or venomous and if you touch that you're going to get paralyzed. He just knows that offhand and he cuts it with his scalpel to get some of the toxin onto his knife. And you think, how many doctors actually walk around with a scalpel in their pocket? Lawrence Fishbourne is also in the movie, but he's hardly in it. He's in it for about, I'd say, 10 to 15 minutes. He plays a guy who's been on the planet for a few years and he's gone a bit crazy. His performance was okay, but it's not like the standout of this movie. And there's probably not much point me saying all the characters' names and all that because you don't even get given their names in the movie. You can pretty much just describe them as like what kind of soldier and criminal they are and what kind of weapon they carry. For example, you can describe them as sniper lady, American soldier with a big shotgun thing, Russian Spetnaz soldier with a big minigun, just the absolute worst of humanity, and Danny Trejo. And also, it's very lucky that for all these different characters that are taken from all over, all different parts of the world, and they can all speak perfect English. Predators must have been super picky that way, only picking them if they can speak English. Why don't you punch me in the face? Punch me in the fucking- First time that we see some hot predator on predator action. We see two different types of predators fight each other, the regular predator and the super predator, two different clans fight each other, it's a bit anticlimactic because the fight itself only goes for like a minute or two and then it's over. So, ah, well, what are you going to do? And I just love the variety of weapons that all the characters have. They have their own kind of special weapons. I like Adrian Brody's character's big shotgun explosive shell thing weapon that he has that's almost as big as him. The big Russian Spetnaz's guy big minigun. It's not a Russian minigun, but it's a minigun, so eh, close enough, I guess. It's just as violent as a Predator movie should be. Lots of awesome, gruesome kills throughout the movie. That should keep you entertained, you sick fucks. There is no Easter Bunny, there is no Tooth Fairy, and there is no Queen of England. It builds upon the different strategies that Predators use to hunt their game. Like, for example, they have these alien dog-like creatures called hellhounds to flush out their prey. 
They use drones and set up traps like how humans do, obviously taking inspiration from what humans actually do to hunt different game. We also get another type of alien in the movie. It's only in there for like 10 seconds or so, but it shows that aliens aren't just hunting humans, they're hunting other aliens as well. And I like how there's different tribes of predators. It's not just one big united clan that rules their whole empire or whatever's going on with the predator law. There's different tribes. So there's the super predators, which are, I guess, bigger, meaner, must be on steroids or something, and bigger than the regular predators. So much like humanity, not all united, fragmented, different tribes and stuff that sometimes go to war with each other. We've got to have money. As much as I like the slight variation on the premise for this movie, it does pretty much feel like a rehash of the original movie. A few other little things and mixed in, sprinkled throughout the movie to make it different, but it's even more far removed from the first two movies. Like the Predator 2 movie, it did kind of feel like a sequel to the first film. It doesn't even really feel like a direct sequel to the first two movies. It almost feels like a spin-off. Complete spin-off with a different set of characters and it's not really attached to the first movie at all. It only references it once directly through dialogue and there are lots of different references throughout the movie that Predator fans will pick up. Like they find the corpse of a US soldier that had built all these different traps that look very similar to Dutch's in the first movie. A nod to that, and there's other nods and little easter eggs throughout the movie that Predator fans will enjoy. It stinks. It stinks. Like I said with Predator 2, only really if you're a fan of this franchise, Predator 2 is considered to be pretty underrated. I think this one is too. I think it's good for a Predator film. It's definitely better than a future movie that's gonna that came out a few years ago. But if you're not really a fan of this franchise or dumb action movies with aliens involved, then it's not really for you. Casual moviegoers might not enjoy it as much, but as a fan of Predator movies, I enjoyed this one quite a lot. So those were my thoughts on Predators. As always, thank you for listening to me ramble on about a movie for a few minutes. I do appreciate it. Thank you again, and I'll catch you next time.